Hey, welcome back. I'm Abraham. I'm with Nerd Studios, and we're going to get straight into it. Let's start talking about the four step process. Okay, one of the first things you're going to want to do, <laughs> what you're, what you're going to want to do is go into WebAssign. Uh, we have at the very bottom here, resources. And in those, um, I've provided a lot of resources to my class. One of those is the Mini Project 2. So we're going to use the data from that. Let's take a look. Now I'm actually going to do this project as showing the four-step process. So let's take a look. Um, there are quite a number of constraints here. So um, certainly you can read those uh, at your own your own choosing, pause the video or whatever. Um, these are the tasks that we need to complete, uh, the cr criteria from which to follow. I'm going to do my best to follow it exactly. And then uh, here's the grading rubric, uh, if you cared to look at that. Uh, this is just supposed to help guide my students in making sure they have all the things that they need for receiving the most amount of points. All right. So at the bottom of all this is the data. So we can grab this entire data set, all of the pieces. We're going to copy it, copy, and then we're going to open up Excel. Now you can do a lot of this in Google Sheets. Um, I choose to do, do it in Excel. And then you just paste the data. And it should separate into the right rows uh, based on if you copied it the way that I did. Right. Cool. So let's go back and take a look at the constraints or the things that we need to do. Uh, we have here open a Google Doc or another type of text document. We'll handle that in a little bit. I'm going to do all the work in Excel first and then I will come back and make sure I hit all these things. All right. Um, but in Excel, there's a lot of this that we can do. Um, for instance, we can throw this question so that we remember what we're doing. That's what step zero is. Type the research question. There's the research question. Uh, we can type it in here, or I mean, sorry, paste it in here. And then you know what it is you're trying to do. All right. Uh, so step one, let's walk through these steps here. So step one, we need to figure out what the null hypothesis is going to be and the alternative hypothesis now in uh, when we get into word we'll use fancier things like actually using the symbols but I'm trying to get things done a little bit faster I'm just going to word, use the word mu and if you remember mu is the population uh, mean and remember also that for all null hypothesis we use equals so this is going to be mu equals something. Well, the only thing we have to go with is this 40. So if we had no data, uh, then, or if we didn't know anything about the data yet, even though it's here, uh, we would say that, okay, it's 40. Um, just to remember that null hypothesis is always equal. We're always going to use equal, okay? The alternative hypothesis is actually going to answer the research question here. Uh, so are runners who enter such trail ultra runs on average over 40 years of age? So that means that we won't use equal. We're going to use greater than. Okay. Cool. So that's step one. Now you might list these out. Uh, you would say um, runners or uh, let's say null hypothesis is that runners um, are 40 years of age on average. And the alternative hypothesis might be um, uh, that that runners are over 40 years of age on average. Cool. That's it. We're just simply stating what is in this cell right here. Mu equals 40. Well, that means that runners 
are 40 years of age on average. If the alternative shows mu greater than 40, that means runners are over 40 years of age on average. Cool. So that's step one. Step two. Now these are the, uh, con let's see, description of the, of the data and conditions. So if we want to describe the data, if you remember, we have this acronym CUS, which means center, unusual feature, shape, and spread. So let's go with, let's actually just do this. Center, uh, unusual, and then shape, and spread. Cool. So in order to get the center, we're going to say, we're going to find the mean. Now, which column to use? It's probably the age column, right? Because that's the one we're worried about. So we get all of those. So equals average the whole range in the parentheses equals, and we have that as our sample mean, right? This is a sample mean. Mean. And the sample mean is always denoted with x bar. Again, uh, when we go to when we go to Word, we're going to actually use the symbol x bar. That's a little weird to get. Um, you don't have to on if you're in my class and you're watching this, you don't have to do that. You can just write x bar. Uh, but I am going to show how to do that anyway, so, uh, or how to get the symbol. Anyway, uh, but in Excel, again, we're just trying to work our way through this. All right, any unusual features? Well, we don't know yet, right, because we haven't seen the graph. Shape, still don't know because we haven't seen the graph. Spread, well, we could throw in here standard deviation, right, of the sample. That's what the dot S is. So we come over here, get all of it. Boom. There's your spread. So all it's left to do is show the unusual features or or and shapes. And we do that with finding uh, finding or let's uh, build a histogram. So one way to do that is um, I don't think you have to highlight the data yet, but we can say data. Is it data? Uh, maybe it's view view view. <laughs> I have to search around every time. All right, insert, that's what it is, insert. Uh, there's two ways to do this, right? We can insert from the histogram, which is one of these. I don't generally use that method. I actually just come here to data analysis, which is under data. If you don't have this, then uh, you'll have to, you'll have to watch my other video that shows that. I'll leave a link in the description. Uh, anyway, we'll click on data analysis. There's a histogram one, click okay. The input range is, and you want to grab age, you want to grab the title and all the data. Uh, we put label in here because we want to make sure that this thing knows that we're grabbing the label as well. Right? That's not very clear when you look at this, but that's what's happening. So D1 is the label. So you, you bring it in, check the box label, that way your graph can label it correctly. Then you'll check this box, chart output. Um, we can put it in a different one. Uh, I'm not, I'm gonna put it right here. So that's where it's gonna go, okay? And we click okay. And it shows uh, your histogram, okay? Now we've talked about this in the past. Typically these are, a histogram will show all the bars together not separated by spaces. That's generally a bar chart. Creaky chair. All right, but what we're gonna do is, uh, we don't really care that much about that. All we really wanna do is see the shape of our data. And it's, it's kinda crazy, I, I can admit that. You might even try to say that's an outlier, I don't know. Um, again, a lot of that kind of stuff is subjective. Um, so I suppose unusual is there is uh, there is a space between um, the buckets of 21 and 30 point 
six or so, right? That's a thing, but uh, we don't necessarily need to say that. Um, it just depends on how you see this, right? You might you might be seeing it as basically a flowing symmetric shape. I don't know. It's it's hard to say what you're seeing, but um, I'm definitely going to say the shape is unimodal. There's really only one hump here, right? Uh, unless you were to say, oh, there's a space and then there's another little hump. I suppose you could get away with saying bimodal. But let's just go with muni because that, that bit here isn't necessarily... It's just crappy data right there, I'm guessing, right? Like, ah, it's hard to say. All right. Um, so this is, a, this is a reasonable description. Um, I would say it's... Let's also say in the, uh, oh, not, sorry, That's this will go in shape, unimodal, but um, slightly uh, right skewed, slightly. So, you know, so there's conditions that we have to follow based on this, right? So this is the description of the data. So let's take, actually let's take this off. Description of the data will bold some of this so we can keep track of what's going on here. All right, I'm going to make this smaller so that we can do conditions right here. Oops, didn't do that. All right, bold that. All right, so in order to figure out the conditions, right, we need to come back into here, find the formula sheet in those resources. Pull that up. Uh, we'll zoom in here. And the only two that we've had up to this point as a class, as well as uh, the ones watching this, uh, these are the only ones that we're going to care about. These two sections of information. And this is your Z test. And this is your T test. This is your Z confidence interval and your T confidence interval. And these are for only one sample. Okay, so. Uh, so looking at this information we have and these conditions, we need to decide what we have. So uh, this is your population standard, standard deviation and it's not given, right? And if you didn't know, and my students do because they were supposed to write it, um, there is one more thing that can allow you to use that. And that is if n, or the sample size, is greater than or equal to 100. So, we look back at this. We don't really have the sample size, right? So, sample size is, well, I'm going to show you a formula that you could use. It's called count. And you would just count up all these numbers. And you have... 135 of them. Okay, so that's the formula that you could use. You don't have to use that. Uh, you could just count them, I suppose. Uh, but if we're using the software, we might as well just go for it, right? Cool. So the conditions. All right. Um, well, this number is certainly over 100. And although it doesn't show it here on our little conditions, there are other places where it does show it. So we're going to go with this one for now because so far this is okay, right? So uh, since n is greater than 100, uh, we might be able to use uh, the Z test. All right, so conditions. One, SRS. Um, that means that uh, the data is random. So we look back at the problem. Boop. Uh, we don't really know, do we? So that happens in this course. It happens. Uh, it happens in in the classroom setting because, um, well, it just does. And what we have to do to account for that is we just have to throw in this one word, assume. So we're just going to say assume that it's random. Two. The only time you wouldn't assume that it's random is if the problem literally says these were not chosen at random. 
Okay, so for the rest of this video series, that's exactly what you'll do. We'll just assume it's random if it doesn't say it. All right, number two, either n is, let's see, n at least 30 or population normally distributed. So, um, well, we've said that it's slightly right skewed, so I wouldn't say normally distributed per se, but I would say that n is definitely greater than 30. So it meets condition two. Three, population size is at least 10 times the sample size. Yes. Um, and there are m different ways to do this. We have to think about, um, this is a sample of runners from, I guess, well, it looks like mostly Idaho. Really. It's all over the place, huh? But mostly Idaho. So you might even almost say that this is not random because most of them are from Idaho. Uh, so maybe it's all the runners from, from particular ultra runs. Let's go with that. And there's definitely more than 135 ultra runners out there. Definitely more than 10 times that 1350. You'd have to assume that. So, um, we're going to say that big N, which is the population size is greater than, uh, 10 times little n. Okay. In other words, the population is definitely larger than 10 times the sample size of 135. All right, cool. So what that does right there, what, by writing all this out is it says, Hey, we now have the conditions necessary to use. We now have the conditions necessary to use the Z, Z, Z <laughs> test. All right, cool. Roger that. Step three. Why am I stuck like that? Probably that Nashville word. Huh? Okay, step three is we actually have to calculate. Let's go back into so we can see this again. All right, step two, data, histogram, conditions. Cool, got all those. Um, this is the section that will tell you whether one sample or one sample Z test or one sample T test is appropriate. We're gonna go with the one sample Z test. Step three of four step process. <laughs> Calculate the test statistic and p-value. The test statistic. Well, we're looking to calculate Z test statistic. And that formula is Z star, uh, Z star, oh yeah, we can look at the formula sheet, right? In case you wanted to see it. That's this one here. Oh, okay. So I forgot, Z star is for confidence interval. So Z equals, uh, X bar and let's do it like this let's put parentheses in here minus mu divided by uh, we'll just say Sigma divided by the square root of n all right now <clears throat> since in these conditions we decided because n was greater than 100 that we could use the z test, uh, we also have to um, assume that, oops, that s is approximately equal to sigma. So we're really going to use, instead of sigma here, we're really going to use s, but we're not going to let that trip us up too much. Okay. Right. Cool. So uh, let's list out what these things are. So X bar. Well, we know that is the center. So we're just going to say it's that guy. We know that mu based on uh, step one, that mu is going to be 40. 
we know that sigma, oh, we're, uh, we're assuming that S is approximately equal to it, and that's the spread here. So we're going to say this equals that. And then finally, uh, N is equal to this 135. Right, so we have all the pieces for this formula. So uh, Z and then equals, let's put all these pieces together. So it's X bar minus mu, oops, back up, in the parentheses divided by new parentheses, sigma divided by the square root of N. There we go, 2.292. That is our Z stat, or Z test stat. Cool, so we found the first part. Now we need, now we need P value. All right, there's multiple ways to do this. Um, I'm gonna just pick the easiest, I think. And the easiest is uh, that <clears throat> we're going to do equals 1 minus, since we're doing the Z statistic, ugh, messed that up, uh, norm dot S dot dist, and in there we put this Z, cumulative is always true for these, cumulative is always true, hit enter, and this is our P value, P value. P value. And there it is. Step three. P value. So these guys are looking pretty good. Alright, so we've gotten through three of the steps. Step four. Bold. Alright. Step four. Let's look at the instruction for step four. Oh, wrong, wrong thing. There it is. Uh, state an appropriate conclusion. Be sure to include the correct statistical terminology. Reject the null hypothesis or fail to reject the null hypothesis. And a sentence in plain language that someone who knows no statistics can understand. Right. So, step four is, um, well... The only thing that's not being told to us here is our significance level. So um, if we assume that the significant, significant level is 5% or 0 0.05, uh, then since uh, the p-value, which is equal to 0 0.010952, is less than 0 0.05, we reject the null hypothesis. Uh, this means that there is significant evidence, evidence that ultra runners are over 40 years of Over, over that on average. Okay, cool. So there we have it. Did the whole four steps. Done and done. Cool. And next, uh, we're going to dive into how to place these into Word. It's pretty, pretty simple from here, but uh, we're going to do that right now. <clears throat> Alright, so let's just move this aside, and then we're going to bring up Word. Cool, we have Word, so we're going to bring up a new, new one. 
and we want to make sure we follow these instructions still so I'm going to keep them up um, I'm going to move it over the side here that you can't see uh, let's see open up Google Doc or another type of text document sorry I will put it here or another type of text document and type your name and the project due date at the top so let's do this way okay so the name my name and the project due date well I think this is what it is do that's all I'm really looking for for my students to do so we'll see how many do it um, you can do this however you want if you're like hey I want that to look like a title you can certainly do that I honestly don't care all right next uh, let's see the first research yeah okay so we have all these things to type do the following type the research question okay um, let's go down here to this so item one header at the top got that right uh, correctly performing step zero okay type the research question okay so I'm gonna come back over here I'm literally gonna copy what I had in Excel boom <laughs> done zoids Okay. I seem to remember there it is step numbers not showing cool so even though this is step zero I don't necessarily need anyone to put step zero but the four steps I would like to see them here and this is mainly so that it, you can remember it easier okay all right so step one we're just grabbing just grabbing our results from step one I'm gonna paste them in here pretty uh, pretty straightforward now if you're like me and this bothers you you don't like the fact that there's this null hypothesis you can do alt equals and it'll allow you to to do equations or symbols that we need so we're gonna do that um, we would use a subscript and that subscript is gonna be H and then this is gonna be a zero for the null uh, boom so now it looks like what I expect we're gonna do the same thing here and this is gonna be H. Oh, sorry. You gotta do it like this first. And then H and little a. Right on. I really don't like the uh, border look there. All right, let's see. Border styles. Here we go. Uh, I don't want any border. All right, we're just going to leave it. It's not a big deal. I could get rid of it, but. Um, yeah, like I said, if we wanted to use mu, that symbol is in here. Sometimes I go right by it. Uh, there it is. Mu. Then. I'll do it again. And we're going to put mu right there. Sweet. Step one is done. Now you can pretty it up. I like pretty um, if you so choose. So I'm going to use these headers to do that. Step two. Again, I'm going to use the header. Right on. So uh, I don't like how this is cutting off. So I am going to do some things. So let's see. Uh, 
There's one that goes up and down. I think I gotta make this bigger. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I don't see that. Hmm. Well. Okay. There it is. Got it. Okay. Much better. All right. Step two. Um, this is uh, the first part is the descriptions. So I am once again. Um, now, I showed you one way to do it, which is just straight copy the data. And that's perfectly fine. Or if you did all the work here for typing this out that's fine too um, but uh, now I'm going to show you what you do if uh, you do a screenshot so um, you probably don't have the program or you may not have the program I use this program called called Greenshot and it allows me to copy in things uh, in an easier way I think so what I am going to do is start that up so we got I have to type for mine, and yours would probably be different. Uh, control and then print screen, wherever that is. Now, I just grab the information that I want to copy. Copy to the clipboard, come over here, paste it in, and there it is. Okay. Now, as I mentioned before, or at least it's in the instructions, um, I can't really tell what you did here, right? In this particular form, I can't see that. This is just an image that, that a snapshot. So what I'd like to see you do then, in order to explain how you got some of these formulas is actually go back to here, click on that particular one, it's perfectly fine. And then you see this, so you can either just copy it like this. That's perfectly fine. Come back to here and say, um, you can say for, for mean, um, you use that. For spread, uh, you used the other thing. Now let me show you. If you didn't want to do it like that, you wanted to just do another screenshot, you could certainly use that too. So that's uh, for me, that's control print screen. And then I would come in here, grab it. I think it's probably easier just to copy it and paste it, but you can do it that way too. Okay. Now, just so I keep everything the same on mine, I'm just going to copy it. I don't, uh, I don't particularly care that this range is there. I, I'm not looking for that. I'm just looking to see what your formula was. So uh, just so you know. Cool. Uh, those were two formulas that we did. Um, I don't care about the count as much. You don't have to show me you did that one. Um, so, But you could. You could do the same thing. In fact, let's just do that for to make this short video long. Oops, I screwed up. There we go. So for count, there it is. Nice. All right. What else did we do? We did um, conditions. So let's just copy. Let's. Oh, never mind. Let's not do it. I don't usually like doing it that way. I like. I like the screenshots. So that's what we're going to do. All right. Sorry, just tidy some things up there. Cool. 
All right, so now we have uh, step two done. And as you can see, we already filled up one page. Uh, so let's go to the next page, step three. This gets a heading of one. Now, again, um, I have everything I need here except for a couple of the things that I used underneath. So what we're going to do uh, is I'm going to do another screenshot. All this stuff. Copy the clipboard. Paste it in. But I need to explain these, right? Some of these. So uh, now the z-score I don't need to explain because I have the formula here. But if you didn't have the formula here, then you need to explain how you got it here. Okay? Um, but I have it here, so. But p-value is the only one, I suppose, that we probably need to show. So, uh, p-val. Let's see, what did I say up here? Yeah, four for p-value. We did this formula. Copy, paste, boom. Look at that. Now I know how that was calculated. Okay. Right. That's it. Step four. Heading one and oops. Uh, let's see. So we did that down here. So control print screen. We did all of that. Copy it. Uh, copy that. That's it, man. We're done. So I know a lot of you in my class. You showed me what you did, and you were really worried about this format. Um, hopefully this clears up questions about how simple I want it and certain things that I want to see. I want you to show me the formulas you used. If you used R, then show me those R formulas uh, for things that I couldn't tell from the screenshots. Okay. Um, in other words, I'm looking for you to explain how you got what you got in some way. All right, I'm trying to think, did I get everything here? Let's take a look. So final little check here. Um, <clears throat> this is on one page, it's actually two pages, but front and back, that's one page, so that would be great. Um, step, got the research question, step one, step two, step three, step four. Oh, yeah, we did, we did do all that. Our, all output should be screenshots. So this probably wasn't the best statement. All output should be screenshots directly from Excel or whatever. Uh, I think it was just how I was thinking about what I've shown you here today. Um, but some of, you know, a lot of this could be typed. Like step four, you can certainly type all that out. Perfectly fine. Uh, I'm saying type it out in Word. All right, um, photos of software output copied. In other words, that has more to do with like, hey, I took a picture of my friend's screen <laughs> and I just used the same information they did. And I don't want that. I want you to do it yourself. Okay. So screenshots is okay, but photos from your phone or whatever are not okay. Let's see. Resize graphs so they fit nicely for comparison. Okay. That's all. That's all we needed here. It was just a little graph. Done. And, uh, yeah, so print this thing out if you're in my class. Make sure it looks good. And uh, if you've done all these things as well, these are all correct. You don't lose any points. Um, and you should be good. All right, so that, that concludes it. I've shown you how this works. Now you know the answers. Everybody should get this 100%. I want to see 30 points for everybody, for every single one of yours. Okay?
I know that I'm like it's due tomorrow, but but you might see this. Cool. All right. So hey, until next time, stay nerdy, my friends, and uh, we'll talk to you in the next video.